<laughs> Blessings of the divine upon you, my lady. My husband and I were just sitting down for a picnic under the sun. We haven't much to offer, but would you care to join us? Wonderful. Come, sit, sit. Oh, it's lovely to meet new people on the road. There you go, all cosy. So tell me, are you heading to Arks like we are? Nicholas and I wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world. That's so, so lovely to hear. The more pilgrims pray for his return, the sooner Lucian will walk among us once more, just like the prophecy says. So come, let us break bread and strengthen ourselves for the journey. We have a sacred duty ahead of us in the holy city of Arx. You eat, drink, and have a good time of it with Glory and her husband, Nicholas. After the meal, you express your thanks and take your leave. Greetings! May the Seven circle you and keep you safe. Ah, oh, it's a wonderful day, wouldn't you agree? And with good reason, too. Oh, for isn't it wonderful to look upon so simple a meal, bread and cheese, and be positively overcome with appetite? Why, only a few days ago, I was writhing in pain, having eaten from that rotten fish they dare sell on the market. But then a fellow pilgrim passed by, laid his hands upon my feverish skin, and just like that, I was cured. True, alas, I cannot say who he was, but I can say what he was. A holy man. A stranger showing kindness to strangers, exemplifying the teachings of the divine. Fills my heart with gladness to know that there are still folks like him to be found, now that our Lord Alexander has fallen. May the seven keep him. May they keep all of us. A so-called holy man who can heal with magic. I wonder if he might be one of the sorcerers Moister Siva wants me to find. Where is it? Where is it? Madam? Please, have you seen a small burlap pouch lying about? Blast! It's gone for good, I fear. She rubs a hand over her smooth head, then suddenly looks up at you. Her great greenish gold eyes are alive with worry. There isn't any chance you could spare a moment to help me look, could you? I wouldn't dare ask it if it weren't terribly important. She nods and turns to take her leave, but stumbles, falling a little into your arms. She laughs, embarrassed, and quickly writes herself. <clears throat> Terribly sorry. I'm not in my proper mind today, it seems. I'll keep looking myself. Good day to you. There's a fun face. Baron and I are patching up before we head home. Hope the order folks are treating you all right. You stay out of trouble now. The Magister startles, realising there's a stranger in his midst. What do you want, Elf? You can't just come in here as you please. There's Manchester's missing. I'm trying to conduct a bloody investigation. I didn't ask for your opinion, Savage. I asked why you're here. Now answer me! People are missing out there. Sworn Magisters. Keep your jest to yourself. You've no decency at all, have you? Or how about gold? Do you care about that? 
There's a reward for putting an end to this mess. Maybe you can succeed where Barwill and her comrades are failing. The fiend's greed gave him away. He was peddling items that belonged to those missing from our ranks. He saw my men before they could seize him and fled. Hardly. By all accounts, he seemed like just another money-grubbing nobody. He must have caught my magisters unawares. It's the only explanation. No matter, he'll face justice either way. If you catch sight of that dog, tell me or my men at once. Understand? There might even be a reward in it for you. Well, do you know it? Stop wasting my time then. Come on, can't I go and play with the others? No can do, Chickadee. You're not leaving my sight for a while longer yet. I need those reports, oh, Captain. Right away. No can do, Chickadee. You're not leaving my sight for a while longer yet. But Mom. Oh great, a citizen. Can't you see I'm on a break here? What? Oh no. Poor Demori. Go tell Magister Ryman or Magister Julian immediately. They'll raise the alert. Go. I'm on a break now, Yvette. You better not fall asleep on your watch again. Head nodding drowsily, the Magister brings her voluminous sleeve up to her face. She sniffs loudly and suddenly jerks to attention, eyes red-rimmed with zeal and something else. They won't take me unawares. I'm... I'm ready for anything. See? I have incepted. It... Well, I'm ready. That's what matters. Vigilance! Why, whoever snatching magisters off the street and disappearing them? Six lost in a week. Six! Need to be ready. Ready. Ready! Ready to protect. Waving you away, she cranes her neck to scan all around her, jaw clenched and eyes flickering. I'm watching you, stranger. State your business to Magister Carver, or else get out. If that's all you have to say, you may as well leave me... State your business to Magister Carver, or else get out. You're the best. Nelson, my inkwell is... The Magister turns to you with a scowl. He already seemed immensely displeased, and your interjection isn't improving his mood. What? The Magister glances at you like you're something he just stepped in. Keep out of it! I'll halve you with my sword if you don't mind your own business. That's what I want to know. Stuck here with those silent things. The new leadership ought to learn to respect its veterans. We're the ones who uphold the rule of law, not white ponches like Raymond and Jonathan. A sly smile creeps across the Magister's face. Aye, and sooner than you might think, if the rumours are true. Let's just say, there's other places where I'd be appreciated more than I am in Driftwood. The Magister loses some of his bluster. I... I ain't saying. It's a secret for loyal members of the Divine Order only. Who asked you? You're not even supposed to be down here. The Magister glances around the cells, before ripping the keys from his belt and casting them aside. This isn't the Divine Order I signed up for. Not anymore. I'm done.
passions, unblinking eyes. The spirit of an emaciated prisoner is staring down at his own corpse. He shakes his head and lets out an exasperated sigh. Of all the stupid ways to go. Oh, it was a stupid bloody accident. I dosed myself with some poison to make it look like I was half dead. I figured they'd take me to see a healer and I'd have a chance to escape. I must have taken too much of the stuff though. Wound up fully dead instead of half dead. Those bastards haven't even moved me body. The spirit scowls at you. I did nothing! Or I didn't do what they accused me of, at least. A miscarriage of justice is what this is. That's putting it bloody lightly. Nobody deserves to rot in a hole like this. Best leave that secret for someone who needs it. You can stroll out of here whenever you like. A painful death. Trapped and defenceless. Magister's what? Desertions? What do you know about desertions? You keep those opinions to yourself. We've had enough desertions as it is. The veterans disgruntled with the new leadership. But they slip away in the night, taking supplies. Cowards and traitors, all of them. I'm looking for loyal magisters, vanishing in broad daylight. Desertion just doesn't fit. Fine, Fab, you're a hero. Magisters dropping left and right. Can't say I'm shedding any tears. From the war hour! Hear all about it! It's many a latest, my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? Ain't looking too good for them lizards. Word is, the divine order's gonna win the ancient empire and hit it hard. Don't need to tell you of all people them sauce-loving lizards don't stand a chance. Ain't no one left standing when you treat them to death, folk. Seven save us. Stabbed in the back he was by them vile, low-born, treacherous seekers. Kill them all, I say. Do them like Magister Raymond did, old Lady Seaver. That'll teach them traitors. I mean, they doomed us all, didn't they? The son of the Divine is dead. Gone. Who'll save us now? Johnny Justinia, Queen of the Dwarves. Ha! Ah, scourge, more like. Here's twenty or so noble gentlemen. No one knows what they did wrong, if anything. And she has them stripped and whipped all the way to the execution grounds. 
didn't even give him the dignity of the sword. No, ma'am. Had them all up. Real slow like. You ask me, and I say she's mad as a mink with its tail on fire. Queen or no queen. Good day to you. Keeping it together. The dog lies there quietly, clearly in great pain. What are you looking at? I'm sick here. Get lost. It snaps at your hand. It flinches. A low, threatening growl builds within its throat. Under the collar, you find the sharpened points of metal rivets, gouging the poor dog's skin. The dog bears its teeth at you and growls. The dog gives you a long, hard stare, but does not bite you. Yet. The dog goes to bite your hand, and then realises the pain is gone. Hey, I feel... OK, thanks. Think I'll wander off now. Here, before I go, what can I do to show my gratitude? Master did. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. Master hurted me? Excuse me a minute. I'm going to go now. But first, I have a thing I need to do. He turns to his master. You bad man, you! <laughs> Spelly for a grieving beggar whose dog ran away. Got one on you, do you, my lady? God damn it. How was my livelihood? Penny for a grieving beggar? I reckon I'm owed it here. No. No. You wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, yes. You would do that, wouldn't you? I couldn't prevail upon you to change your mind, could I? He gives you a cool look, then rummages in his pocket. He counts the money out and hands it over. That's your lot. Go on, then. Get lost, you freeloader. I'm working here. Mrs. The little boy looks at you. He picks his nose. You be careful. My daddy's a magister. No, he's not. His daddy's a fisherman like most daddies round here. They stare at you in disbelief. Then they start laughing. You're weird. We're waiting for our friend. He went for a swim. He'll be back soon. He went swimming all the way to Fort Happy. Fort Joy? That's what I said. Fort Joy. He's going to find his mum and bring her back. Cool. How did you know that? Mrs, have you seen our friend Joe? Tell them the truth about Joe. They have to grow up sometime. What they don't know can't hurt them. Don't tell them. Kids are resilient. Tell them the truth. Their innocence in a world with precious little innocence left. Let's leave them that way. The truth hurts, but they'll get over it. Tell them the truth about Joe. They have to grow up sometime. The horror grows on their little faces. No, that's a horrible thing to say. I bet it wasn't Joe. I bet it was someone else's leg in that icky shark. She bursts into tears, then looks from you to her and back again, then starts crying too. After a moment, the crying subsides. Ben and Harriet snuggle into you. So where's Joe? They look puzzled, but the little boy seems to accept the idea. I think we should go home. Come on, Ben. Thanks, lady. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mr. Lady Mrs. They skip away, still children, but now, somehow, older than before. Julian, show them how it's done, man. You'd swear the shark was smiling at you. Don't let up now. Please, He's sir. That These down. sacks weigh like lead. It's a disgrace I have to toil like this. I'm a magister, not a damned silent monk. The barrels and the chests. On go on, you mute sacks of flesh. Put your backs into it. I'll not lose another day to the tide. The Lord Dread awaits. It sails billow with Dallas's breath. 
I'll... The Magister stops barking orders. He sniffs the air like a predator, turns to face you, the wolf eyeing the deer. Oh, but yours is not a stink like the one that surrounds us, spat from a dying sea. Yours is a scent that invites a question. Tell me, have you ever been strung up by the hands? Your body swinging like a bell's clapper as your bones are being broken with cast iron rods. Respect. Try rancor. He licks his lips. Dry flesh turns wet. See, I'd like to string you up too. Rack you with rods and leave you dangling over a puddle of your own blood and piss. His sliver of a smile could rival a rattler's. I'm very good at what I do, see. I don't even need a sauce hound yapping at my side. There was a whiff of something in the air when you approached. A current of filth, that is to say, sauce. Best convince me I was mistaken. He leans in closer and sniffs the air once more. Interesting. So I was mistaken. Must have been ambition I smelt on you, not the magic that dare not speak its name. Very well. In that case, we'll forego the gallows and turn straight to the hunt. The very definition of your order's existence. Seems peaceful here, doesn't it? A quiet day in a quiet town. One wouldn't think these drifting woods toss on dwarf-troubled waters, but they do. Consider for a moment the dwarf. What is he? A mule? A beast of burden? But some defy that role. There are rats among them, dancing to their rat queen's tune. I need of a rat catcher. Of course, I must depart post haste, but Julian here will stay behind and be a good little parrot. Ask and he will answer. Stay behind? But, but I've my orders, same as you. Dallas. Like I said, Julian is staying. And with that, I must be off. No hard feelings about the death threats, of course. How about we part shaking hands instead of stringing them up? How very heartwarming. One last thing. The Magisters here are diligent men and women. Should this happen, just wave this piece of parchment in their eager little faces. My signature will placate them without fail, I assure you. Adieu and good luck. The Lord Dread awaits. The use of the gallows, I pass on to you. Time has come, my stitched lit lovelies. We set sail. Get on board and man your stations. The Magister is rubbing the dirt off his robes. None the worse for wear, apparently, from the blast of magic that knocked him off his feet. You! The supposed source hunter! I'd be whining and dining aboard the Lord Dread if it weren't for you. Your meddling in Magister affairs had better be worth it. A man of stature wouldn't be moored on a dock with no one but dead fish for company. But here I am and here you are. So, to business. Now answer me. Did you meet with a Magister caravan on your way into town? The hour's growing late and I'm beginning to worry something might have gone wrong. By the bishop's bones, you saw it. Out with it, woman. What happened? Wolves! The pox on those beardy devils! Raymond, that old goat, always suspected there's more to the driftwood dwarves than meets the eye. Hate to admit it, but I think he may be right. Too many things have gone wrong along Reaper's coast to attribute to bad luck. Magister ship sinking, weapons disappearing, and as you've seen, a caravan attacked and destroyed. Rumor has it the Dwarvian Queen herself is behind these acts of sabotage. That is what I want you to prove. There's a local thug, Lohar. He runs an operation out of his hideout beneath the Black Bull Tavern. 
I suspect this man of being a spy for his queen. It may be interesting to have a word with him. Find out what he's up to. Where I really want you to ferret around is Reaper's Bluffs, to the west of Driftwood. It's wild territory, remote and hostile, where I believe the dwarves may have set up a base of operations away from prying eyes. Should you find any such place, and better yet, proof that Lohar is working in behalf of Queen Justinia, you will be handsomely rewarded, I assure you. They've always been snakes in the grass. Cheap labor, sure, and hard workers too. Half of them are their queen's spies. Her eyes, her ears, her poison-pouring hands. You know what Queen Justinia is like, surely. A tyrant and a master strategist to boot. In that case, go forth and let the hunt commence! Magister's caging anyone up that looks at them funny. Damn right. I got a right to live, don't I? And throw them in a hole for all I care. I don't think you'd know even a small Weep, of my friend! For Alexander! Pretty good, ain't he? Bet he'd even write a poem for you if you sidled up all nice like. A valiant warrior against you who have interrupted my newest masterpiece! The bard clears his throat and gargles on his own saliva. He then returns to his poem, but his voice cracks mid-verse. Mm. Well, never you mind. Every sonnet I compose is a masterpiece, and my muse has been begging me to write something new. Wait! You might be just the stimulus I needed! I should craft a rhyme for you and your race! All I ask in return is a handful of coins. It's an offer of a lifetime. Hmm. Normally I'd argue with you, but you do have a certain look about you. <laughs> Very well. But if I am to write a first-rate work, you must face some difficult questions. Are you prepared to answer? He stares at you for a few torturing moments. My first question. Are you hungry? Actually, that's not quite what I mean. But you eat flesh. When you look at me, what do you see? A dwarf? A bard? A meal? He smiles a crooked smile and runs a hand through his greasy hair. An elf craves those memories like an addict craves Drudenay. A pity that you turn to the dead for emotional sustenance. Would you not rather form bonds with the living? I suspect you collect memories not for knowledge, but from fear. Your homeland fell to the ravages of war and death fog. You worry of more loss, more loneliness. Tell me, Elf, are you afraid? The bard hems and haws, then bellows his next words to anyone who might hear. To all lovers of verse, I bring glorious news. I have completed another modern classic. Listen now, and bask in its resounding refrain. A hunger gnaws at elves, a driving lust. They hunt and wander, seeking rotting flesh. First a taste, a morsel, then the meal. Yet, never sated, start their search afresh. A wealth of knowledge, not of shiny trinkets. They know the past, so future may be bright. But threatened by the void, they rise together! Chasing off the darkness with the light! 
You must be delighted by my newest ode. Oh, soon, bards throughout Rivalon will sing it. Fame, notoriety, neither or both. The thing about a good verse is that it wiggles into the ear. People think it's just a catchy rhyme, but it changes minds and hearts for good and for ill. Wonderful. But I must ask some uncomfortable questions. He stares at you. My first question. Are you hungry? He smiles. An elf craves those memories like an addict craves drooping. I said the bard had to all hunger gnaws at elves a driving voice. That glorious visage. You are fair elf. But Barstanzel Yur is unsurpassed. Such a face could only be sculpted by the hands of a god. The spirit of a magister stares dumbly at her translucent hand, the things of which have been sheared off. My ring! Where's my ring? The spirit looks at you with the smallest flicker of realization. I was still alive when she started cutting pieces off me. She wanted me to feel it. All of it. The spirit ponders your question and seems to shiver. Oh, in many places. I feel my body in a hundred moving graves, warm and wet. The spirit inclines her head towards the kitchen. Yet never sated start their search afresh. A wealth of knowledge. An elf sways on her chair, her eyes focused on the counter in front of her, where she has six glasses in a row. With the nails of two fingers, she's pressing red welts into her forearm. She slides one of the drinks towards you, her head bobbling heavily on her neck as she nods at the sparkling ale. And that's... Her eyes go wide with panic. The fog came over them all, all of them, and they never came out. Everyone I know is dead. Excuse me. A crimson and in a starched apron wipes a glass with a clean rag. She pins you with blue or steel sharp eyes as you approach the bar. Nah. Blessings upon our Lucian, seven times divine. Her eyes soften and crinkle as she smiles. I see your mother raised you very well indeed. Rare for an elf, but all the more impressive. You and my Nails might even get along. What brings you to Driftwood, darling? Yes, that's my boy. Did you know him? Finest physician in all of Reaper's Coast. Top of his class. My, but it's been too long since I've seen him. A fine physician indeed. That's my boy. Some say all a growing child needs is food and sunshine. I say abstinence and chastity will grow him finer than either one of those. Oh, but it's so good to meet a friend of Niles. Here, have a little something to eat. Niles' favourite, you know. No one in our little town can appreciate work so fine as his, you know. All his instruments and books are stored away upstairs, all but forgotten. It's such a terrible waste. You can hang your hat on that. I'd love to show you, but I'm afraid I can't leave the bar unattended. This crowd isn't a bit trusted, believe you me. But I suppose, well, there's no harm, is there? You seem to be a good sort. One of Lucian's own, isn't that right? Here, take this key and head on up the stairs. You'll find Niall's room there. He'd want to know his fine things weren't languishing and appreciated in his own room. The elf beckons you into the back room. A hungry, playful look in her eyes. She comes in close, her breath warm on your face, and thrusts a kitchen knife right into your heart. I spotted something. The cook acknowledges you with a graceful little bow, but keeps her eyes on you the whole time. There's nothing here for you, sister. You should go back out front, where it's safe. 
There are other elves, ones who aren't working and have time to talk. The briefest hint of disdain flickers across the cook's taciturn features. Some wouldn't see any luck here. Some would be ashamed to serve those who mock our own customs, who defile our ancestor trees, and saw nothing but death. Some would. But I must work. Your accusation provokes nothing more than a raised eyebrow from the cook. Ridiculous. Then an elf would know whose flesh she supposedly consumed. Do you know? Yes, Magisters. Filthy, murdering pigs. Pigs eat anything, even each other. Then, when the time is right, they're slaughtered and fed to more pigs in turn. It's how it should be. My closest kin are gone. Their ancestor trees felled. The Magisters took everything from me. My secret would be far safer if I knew you could never talk again. There's a carving knife in her hand. You never even saw her pick it up. I have more work to do, more magisters to rid the world of. I can't leave any loose threads. She gives you a long look, unsure, then decides. Betray me and you'll meet the same fate as the others. Now go. Magister seal. There's blood on it. Chasing off the darkness with the light. Ah, finally. Your colleague over there is absolutely useless. I'll have a bowl of the house too, if you please. Oh, pity. I've been trying to get a little something to eat all day. But the giggleheads who run this establishment don't seem to be willing to provide a fellow with his fair portion. After all I've been through, too. He lowers his gaze, then looks up at you expectantly. His lip trembles dramatically. It's my mentor. My dear mentor. He was... killed by those void beasts. I told him we ought not to travel in the hills. But would he listen? No. Now here I sit, my closest companion gone, our precious cargo worth more than Lucian's right ring, lost to the beast-infested wilds, and the waiter won't even bring me any stew. Ah, oh, then perhaps my luck has changed. Yes, perhaps this awful business might soon be behind me. Tell me. How are you with, well, Void Woken? Ah, oh, terrific news. Then what I ask will be little more than a trifling. My mentor, Lee, and I were hauling in a goodly number of fine wares from the Southlands when we crossed paths with a great brute of a Void Woken. It made short work of Liam, may the gods rest his soul. I managed to escape, but my precious cargo was left behind. We'd invested our entire livelihood in those wares. I'll do anything to get them back. Of course. Of course. We'll, um, discuss the specifics once you've returned. Now, give me your map. I'll show you just where to look. I doubt those beasts out there have any use of such a cargo. I can't tell you how thoroughly you've made my day. She nods an uninterested greeting. Here for the fight. This is a tavern. People are drinking. Eventually there'll be a fight. You planning on starting one? Well, I look forward to beating the shite out of you then. Bye now. Till later. And you right. Eat or drink. Put the saucer on the loose. I knew they should cut off the Meister's head and burn the rest. Gotta make sure it don't grow back. Same as before, the spirit... The ring! It was right here! 
On my feet. Something shakes the Magister's ghost from her stupor. Her gaze falls on the ring and brightens. My ring. Your words take a long moment to sink in, like they're being translated for the netherworld. Return it home to my brethren. The spirit smiles at you. If it weren't for the circumstances, it'd be almost heartwarming. Yes, you're good with the Magister's caging anyone up that looks at them funny. Damn right. I got a right to live, don't I? Throw them in a hole for all I can. It's the great good. I don't think you'd know even a smaller good if it bit you on the arse. Arguing with Mac. to Magister Carver, or else get out. That's Magister business. Keep your nose out of it. The Magister pl Awake? Asleep. Her glassy eyes... Again? Seriously? I'm sure. I guess you should go tell Magister Carver. Belson, my inkwell is dry. Fetch me some water. The Magister's... What? Well? What are you waiting for? Tell me! No could do, chickadee. You're not leaving this site for a while longer yet. He fixes you with a stare, looks you up and down, weighs you up, the cut of your cloth, the weight of your bag. A moment passes. Then a smile creases his face. A smile carefully constructed to look friendly and authentic. A smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Greetings, my lady. Looking to ease the pain of a decaying world. You're in the right place. Beers are ordered at the bar, but can I interest you in a nourishing bowl of stew? He purses his lips. His fingers drum a pattern on his elbow as he assesses you. I'll tell you now, you'd better warm your hands before you go upstairs, or your new friend will be very upset. A lascivious smile spreads across his face. His tongue darts from his mouth to lick the spittle from his lips. Let me ask you this. Across the world, who is renowned above all others for their exquisite lovemaking abilities? Exactly. And of your kin, there is one whom I believe to be talented above all of your kind. If for an appropriately sizable sum, I can make the necessary introductions. Well, this is what's available. Take it or leave it. And I suggest you take it. It's better to regret something you did than something you didn't do, am I right? He holds out his hand. The money vanishes into his apron. Now, let me ask you this. What <clears throat> flavour of stew do you prefer? Do you like the strong and meaty variety? Or do you prefer it delicate and fragrant, if you get my meaning? Upstairs, on the second floor. Her name is Zara. Pleasure is her business. Enjoy the experience of a lifetime. He gives you a mischievous grin, then dips his head in salute and turns away. A weathered woman in a dirty sea captain's tunic babbles breathlessly to her son. The bell rings a warning and the tide is on the turn. And I without my compass. The ship is in the locker, on the bottom in the rocky shallows, and all are drowned but me. And yet, can you hear? The bell rings on. The bell haunts me yet and it would drive me mad. Perhaps I am already mad. 
but I swear I hear the bells. Please, make it stop. She buries her head in her hands and... Make it stop. A ghostly seaman stares at the captain, his lip curled in a malevolent grin, his eyes wide with hate, and all the time he rings his bell. He registers your presence. His head swivels towards you. Spoke to the lady captain, didn't you? I seen your elf cozying up. Are you with her or sail you with us? Curiosity killed the cat. I get the sense of more joy. I'm doing my duty here, I am. I'm the lookout and I'm ringing the bell. Rocks ahead, Captain. There's no lighthouse here. Rocks ahead. <laughs> but I'm on duty here. There are rocks ahead and the Captain must know it. He blinks once, twice. A single salty tear drips from one ghostly eye. The bell falls silent. He raises a finger to his temple in salute and fades away. She babbles breathlessly on, barely aware you're there. My ears are still a-ringing. And I have you to thank for it? Then thank you, I surely do. That accursed bell lies with the peacemaker on the bottom in the rocky shallows. My compass lies there too. She goes white, as white as the proverbial ghost. You've got no call to go looking for no cargo. As far as anyone's concerned, we sail with an empty hold, and if there's anything left to salvage, you leave it where it is. Heed me. Leave the cargo of the Peacemaker alone. She turns away. And I'm saying, you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. And you can't be too Curiosity careful. Curiosity kills you know? the cat. If I can get her little... That's a sense of shame, it is. An absolute shame. Oh, no. Can you believe it? The divine sum slaughtered like a supper lamb. It ain't right. It ain't right. Never thought I'd say this. I hope they round up them sorcerers for good. I ain't needing one sick and avoid working on me. You said it, Hilga. You're a true patriot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. What do you want, tree stock? Huh. I want another beer and a bowl of stew. Which of us is more likely to get what they want, do you think? Guess that makes me a sinner. Perhaps you can help us settle an argument. Thatcher here is one of my dearest friends, but she isn't the brightest. Thatcher grins, hello. Our mate Boris got posted to Fort Joy for consorting with lizards. And Thatcher here still fancies a turn around the park with Lovric's lizard. I say she'll be sleeping with the enemy. What say you? They look at you expectantly. You got that right, Hilga. You got that right. And I'm saying you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mind away. Thatcher bursts out laughing. Eden goes bright red. Get lost! before I throw you in a cell for disrespecting a Magister. Two Magisters. The Magisters. Thatcher doesn't look disrespected. Thatcher looks amused. Disrespecting one Magister's enough. Go on. Get lost. She turns back to her drink. Of course it's not true. Hmm. She tips you a wink, then turns away. Weathered and rugged, the man sleeps soundly. <sighs> There's bad things in the caves. Bad dwarf things. His eyes open, but he doesn't see you. <sighs> Blood and oil do mix, after all. His eyes flicker open, but he looks like he's still asleep. The island is ruined and doesn't have a name. Don't go there. Startled, he opens his eyes, but he's staring into the distance. He's still asleep. <sighs> There's no graveyard on the island. Stay away from the graveyard. Startled, he opens his eyes, but he's staring into the distance. He's still asleep. 
So dust and wolves, mother. So dust and wolves. His eyes flicker open, but he looks like he's still asleep. <sighs> Ox for Lucian's day sounds nice, mother. His eyes open, but he doesn't see you. <sighs> Leave me alone, mother. His eyes flicker open, but he looks like he's still asleep. <sighs> Get away from my chest. He goes back. The chest won't open. Speak the word, and I shall open. Speak the word, the magic word, and I shall open. You speak the word, I open. For your safety, please stand back. The lock unlocks with the tiniest click. Doesn't this room strike you as eerie? There's a chill in the air, a, a deeper darkness in the shadows. But, of course, I should hold my tongue and stand guard. I am Baron Levere. I am Baron Levere. Not he. Not he. I am Baron Levere. An imposter is he. That man over there, a lone wolf in my own sheep's clothing. Bejeweled is he with a false name. Draped is his back with a false mantle. Bedecked are his cheeks with a false beard. Murderer, thief, imposter. I am Baron Levere. A rival's revenge? Another merchant's madness? Oh, the fever of gold is reason's bane. But it matters no longer what drove them to daggers. It matters who drove them into my flesh. You who hears the laments of the dead, avenge me. Kill the false Baron. Give me back my name. Please. Avenge me! As you approach the silken robed noble, Ifan does a double take and laughs in recognition. He pulls you to one side. I know this man, and he's not at all what he seems. A moment. Ifan bounds forward and embraces the man, all effusive greetings. As they part, talking animatedly, the man's beard slips sideways down his face. He's wearing a disguise. Ifan laughs as he straightens the beard. They chatter away for some time, using a guttural cant you struggle to understand. At one point, the man says something and looks over at you intently. Ifan waves his hand and laughs. The man hunkers down and seems to be sketching a rough map on the floor, using an apple, some playing cards, and a fistful of threads pulled up from the carpet. Ifan claps the man on the back and turns to leave. Well, now we know the way to the sawmill. 
And we know Roost thinks I'm bringing you there as part of the Godwoken contract. Roost's camped out at the sawmill. Here now. When one's in a small town, one must expect small town manners, I see. Have you a reason for barging into my room, madam? I've no idea what you're talking about. Now, will you be leaving my room under your own power, or will I have to whistle up my guards? Ah, so it's dear Prudence who's responsible for our confusion. Odd, she's usually as strict as a tax man. Still, no harm done, I suppose. I may as well introduce myself. Baron Levere, at your service. Well, bugger me with a bull's horn. Although, met with his spirit, you say? My, 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 who's the little mouse that comes a sniffing out the wolf? Could she be a godwoken? Too late. You've spilled the beans. I've been told about your party tricks. Every lone wolf in the land is looking to sink its teeth into your flesh. Enough that their howling could keep a forest awake, and how they will, for our prey is mine. You're about to make me very, very rich, little mouse. Richer even than butchered old Baran, whose dead appearance I'm keeping alive. Speaking of keeping up appearances... You men, stand by your master. This ruffian has come to rob me.
imposter is dead. My name is mine once more. You who suck as the souls of the dead, I thank you. I am Baron Levere. In the halls, I'll be Baron Levere. Of course it's not true. A lizard, tall and beautiful, turns towards you. She fixes you with a sultry look, and when she speaks, it's like listening to honeyed smoke. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I didn't mean anything by it. I'm just the demure yet sexy maid. I was in here, clearing up, and I saw these clothes. I couldn't resist. Please don't punish me. I'm so sorry, madam. I shall remove these clothes immediately. But mistress, these clasps and straps, they're so difficult for my delicate, sensitive, playful fingers. Would you... She bats her eyelashes as she turns her back to you. Mind helping me? She holds the robe to her, turns to face you. A mischievous smile plays across her lips. Then she lets the robe fall to the floor. Her mouth opens to form a perfect O of mock horror. Then she grins. Take me. She smiles, takes you by one manicured hand. With the other, she strokes your cheek, traces a line down your neck to your collarbone and your clothes. Slowly, she undresses you, then takes you to bed. Your world explodes in ecstasy. Good morning, my birds. Good morning, Gil. Hey, this is my lover. Lover, this is my friend Gil. Shut it, Longbow. Your gear is out of reach. I'm sorry, darling. It's a setup. You paid for a trip to paradise. Now you're paying for the return journey. To wit, we're taking all your stuff. If you want it back, you can take it up with Loha. Reckon that's for you to figure out. She gives you a pity pout. I'm sorry, darling, but business is business. And time is money. So if we're all clear on what's happening here, we'll be leaving with your stuff.
Oh, my darling. You're so very good at what you do. I hope you're not sore about what just happened. She returns the smile with interest, a twinkle in her eye. It was worth it, wasn't it? Now, baby, you should leave. Oh, darling, I've forgotten you already. Gives you his mischievous grin. I did promise you the experience of a lifetime. His eyes widen, his lip quivers. You expect him to be afraid, even ashamed, but he's relieved. Oh, thank the gods. They had me over a barrel. You have to believe me. It's hard enough to earn a crust around here, and me and the young'un, we've been starving. He contrives to look even more pitiful. But then, a grin breaks across his face. Oh, hell, I can't keep a straight face. You're right, there's no young'un. It's an easy way to make a little extra money. But no harm done, eh? Admit it, you had a good time. Lift a finger towards me, and this whole room will rise to my defence. Thank you. Come again. Hey, up! If it ain't the beast, man! Can't believe you found driftwood. How do you smell the ale over all that rotten fish? Get it? <laughs> <laughs> the unfamiliar dwarf scratches his head nervously, then chuckles again. He doesn't seem sure what to say next. Hey, 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 hey. shh! Keep it low. I don't need magisters crawling up my backside after I just emptied it out. I'll be quiet as a mouse. You bet. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> now go on down. Effie's Emporium's your bag for sure. Look at that, a fresh face, lean and lovely, like any true elf. Good to meet you, Governor. What's your poison then? A sip or a smoke? Oi, so it is. But not just any druid now. Oh no. My own special blends. Further down's the arena, see? And the gladiators are always on the lookout for. An edge. I give them that edge. You could say that my darling herbs flower in the flesh and blossom in the brain. So, if you're interested, Governor, all you have to do is use your imagination. How can I make you bloom? No problem. In return for a reasonable donation, that is. Effie digs all kinds of outlandish herbs from out of the depths of many pockets and mixes them with the patience and skill of an alchemist. Much obliged, Governor. And here's your blend. Just take it to that big beauty of a pipe over there and have a blast. Smoke billows from this strange contraption. It's adorned with hoses, levers and slots. Quite a beauty, ain't she, Governor? First, you come to me and you buy yourself some Drudenay. That's always step one. Next, you put some leaves into one of them slots and pull the lever next to it to lead a flame right underneath them. Now, all you gotta do is suckle the right mouthpiece and before you know it, you'll be seeing flying tigers just like old Ganga over there. Oh, and by the boy, come talk to me if you want something that'll really blow your socks off. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, governor. 
Smoke billows from this strange contraption. It's adorned with hoses, levers. Heaven save me. This leaf is strong. <laughs> Watch him fight. Watch him. See that? Right in the kisser. <laughs> doesn't even... Doesn't... My good lady, I see that you accompany no other than His Royal Majesty, the Red Prince. I have a message for him of quite vital importance, if you'd be so kind. Of course she'll be so kind. Speak freely, kinsman. As a rule, no. In my present circumstances, very much so. Let's hear it. Directions, milady. I was bid to send you to none other than Bramos the Wanderer. He was waiting for you here, my prince. But, but... He looks around the hazy room with hasted eyes. The House of Shadows stirs. The Honorable Bramos sensed them closing in. He had no choice but to flee from Driftwood. A little ways east he went, in search of safety, to an encampment of paladins. You will find him there, Majesty. And with that, I have told my tale. Indeed I am. We will follow your directions. You have my thanks, kinsman. Prince of princes, I am humbled and grateful. He bows deeply before the Red Prince, as reverently as one would before a god. Hail, darling. Call me Dorothea. She draws close. You feel her breath on your neck, hot, moist. Mmm. Oh, yes. I have something that you want. But I only bargain with those I deem deserving. Those who have accomplished great things. So, tell me, are you worthy of my gift? Indeed. Hmm. This is acceptable. You are nearer the one than most self-described heroes I've known. So, tell me, are you ready for me to grant you your greatest desire? Oh, make no mistake. Your body would be to my taste. But I am interested in probing deeper. You have a need to expose it. Look into my ring and tell me what you see there. Gaze into the gem, my lovely. She flashes her ring at you, and you stare at the luminescent stone at its center. You are floating on a current of pure source, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of colors and fuzzy images. On the horizon looms a dark silhouette. As you approach, a beam of light washes the shadow away, revealing to you... Mmm, yes. I see you clearly now. Mmm, it is power you seek. To conjure maelstroms and command the light to drive away shadow. I will fulfill this desire. In return, I ask for one thing. A kiss. Dorothea sighs. A fusion of a kitten's purr and a cockroach's clacking. Ah. <sighs> for me to help you, our souls must touch. And a kiss brings our souls closer, does it not? It shall fulfill both your desire and mine. Most delicious. Meet me around the corner, and come alone. An audience is not required.
Dorothea sees you and heaves a shuddering sigh. She bites into her lower lip with enough force that a drop of blood seep... Darling, I admit I wish we could share more carnal pleasures. Yet I think a kiss is the height of intimacy. Now come closer and receive your soul's desire. You draw closer and close your eyes, eager to feel her lips on yours. Yet her lips do not press against yours, and her hands do not caress your face. She is a woman no longer, but a were-spider. Her fang painlessly sinks into your neck. You still hear her words, though they sound muffled, as if filtered through a glass wall. You desired power, and so it's yours. My venom seeps into every pore. We part ways now. I'll remember this moment. Oh my, you tempt me. But there will be no more between us. She kisses her forefinger, then presses it against your forehead. Now go. Beast strokes his beard for a few seconds, buries his hand inside it, then whips it out again to display his extended middle finger. He marches past, finger still raised, to the chagrin of the gawking guard. The guard shrugs back. Boss can take care of himself. I'd like to see your friend try that with him. Not no more she ain't. I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anhar? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart! Cade! Get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming in. What's got Beast it? bristles the moment he sees his fellow dwarf and slams his right fist into his left palm, growling all the while. Beast thrusts his weapon at his fellow dwarf, who looks first to you, then to Beast. He's surprisingly unfazed by the obvious threat. You're a brave lad waltzing in here now. I know who you are, you know. The beast of the sea. What brings you to this good-for-nothing town? Operation Downfall, you numbskull. And you'll tell me what you know, or I'll turn your guts inside out and stuff them down your throat. Disgusting. Well, before you go blood-crazed, you should know the Queen's no friend of mine. Not no more. He hawks a wad of spit on the floor, then motions to the room around him. I'm a businessman. I can't say I always keep things on the up-and-up. But I don't think a rogue pirate's got a lot of room to judge a man for his various trade concerns. And what Justinia's cooking up ain't so good for my bottom line. I don't want to help Justinia. I want to stop her. Beast considers Lohar's words for a moment, then sheaths his weapon and motions to Lohar to keep talking. I thought you'd see things my way. Come, make yourself comfortable. We'll have a chat when you're ready. The battered dwarf pulls her lips back into a garish, open-mouthed grin, flashing blood-stained teeth. <laughs> Leave me be, elf. Step off, let's... Brave lass, waltzing in here. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Family matter. She's one of mine. 
Acting like her brains are scrambled, though. Came after me with a knife. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how'd you make it out of Fort Joy? <laughs> I've got to say I'm impressed. I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all? So? What do you want? You're gonna waste my time. We're gonna have trouble. Reckon I do. Knowing Seaver, she sent you looking for sorcerers, I bet. I could help you. But last I heard, you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that? An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out. Depending on what you can do for me. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but not. I'd like a word with the guy. That'd be up to him, wouldn't it? No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth it. Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seaver's after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. Better get out there before... All right. Whatever needs doing. Isn't that obvious? That's right. Lost one of my best lads, Anhar. Didn't get Jalia's body back, though. Maybe one of them beasts took her like they did the sorcerers. Less... Well, I reckon that's good news. P poor thing. She'll be back in time. She and Anhar were sweethearts. Bloody lad. Flapping his gums in the next life, too. That's another little venture of ours. Don't concern you, though. We will, once the Reds turn down the alarm a bit. They're jumpy as all hell for the moment. Won't do anyone any good to raise a ruckus now. Bugger off. Can't you see I'm trying to relax? Pouch? What pouch? Oh, that was you. Yes, yeah, sorry, bub, but I was pulling your crank. There ain't any pouch. I just wanted to distract you while I nipped a little gold out of your pocket. Needed a fix. Sorry. Now, 
Like I said, please kindly bugger off. It's turned to smoke by now. Go ahead and take it from my flesh if you want. I don't care. Leave me alone. I can't offer you...